Baptist. Amen. I wanted to continue in this series entitled Rooted. Uh, we started off talking about how to study the Bible. I'm not sure if you caught that all of it. If you haven't caught all of it, I hope that you can go back online and watch it. Amen. I uh, gave you the fundamentals on studying the Word of God from um, how to observe a passage, how to um, interpret a passage, and how to apply a passage. And I was praying this morning, uh, you know, I was going to talk about your identity in Christ, but I'm, I got another series I'm, I'm doing in the Breaking the Cycle series. Um, and so I'm going to, I'll share that with you later. So I started to think to myself and I asked this question, should I come back to church after the pandemic? It's a good question. And tonight I want to begin this series talking about why church membership matters. That's what we're going to talk about. All right, in this series rooted. Now, when we think about church membership, there's a lot of things that go along with it. Um, I want to let you know that the moment you... The moment you decided to give your life to Jesus, the Bible says that God transferred you. Amen. There was a transfer that happened. Um, from the dominion of darkness to the light. Okay. Um, God transferred you into his kingdom. All right, now hear, hear where I'm going with this, okay? God transferred you into his kingdom. All right? Open your Bibles to Colossians chapter 1 for me. Now, y'all don't have to stand. You know, this is Bible study, so we're we just we going to be jumping a little bit, moving around a little bit. And, and, and I'm going to talk about being rooted, okay? And what that means, being rooted, means that when, when, when the world comes to shake you, right? When the devil and the flesh steps in, you will be so rooted that you won't move, Right? Now, the Bible does say that Satan wants to pluck you out. Remember when I was teaching about the seeds and the sower and I was talking about that and I was saying to you all that if the word does not go down in your heart when you hear it, right? If it doesn't come out in your living, if you don't practice it, you could be shaken at any time. But I believe that the enemy, along with this COVID-19 and People's mentality about church has changed. Just straight up. I, it's changed. It's just totally changed. It's like, you know, uh, we can, we, I don't know about you, but I mean, we, had, we spent a whole year behind the screen. <laughs> we spent a whole year at home, a year and a half at home. Right? And, and it wasn't the same. How many can say it wasn't the same? Right, we, we coped, but we had to adapt, but it wasn't the same. Correct? And so the question would be is this when God saves us, why does he why doesn't he just say, Why is it why does he connect you with a church? Why does he connect you to a church? Why can you just get saved and stay home? Right? So 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 the question on the floor is after the pandemic is it, it am I supposed to come back to church? Should I come back to church? And then secondly, does membership matter? Why does it matter? Why does church membership matter? Right? So I guess what we're trying to we're going to answer these questions in the coming weeks, but I just want to show you something that's really important to your Christian life. Colossians chapter 1 
And I, I want to look at something here. I want to look at verse 13. All right. He says, for he rescued us. How, how many know that you needed to be rescued? Can I ask a question? What did God rescue you from? Sin and death. Anybody else? What did what did God rescue you from? The world. Come on, we talking tonight. We talking tonight. What did He rescue you from? Bad thinking. Habits. Um. Yourself, anger, come on y'all, come on, God rescued us, but the thing about it is we didn't even know we needed rescuing, because we thought that what we were doing was normal, because we were in darkness, right, we were not, listen, I believe one of the greatest privileges, now I, I want you to hear me on this, okay? That you and I will ever have on earth to be part of something is the church of Jesus Christ. And here's why I know that it's a privilege. Because when I wasn't saved, I used to drive by the church and turn my nose up at the church. And church people. And I was like, man, what are these people? What are these? I would be at Killian's uh, line on Sunday morning. You know, cutting my grass on Sunday morning. Going to wash the car on Sunday morning. Come on, somebody. Matter of fact, going out to breakfast on Sunday morning with the family. You understand? That that was our ritual on Sunday morning. We, we wasn't about going to nobody church because we work all week long. We play hard on Friday. Come on, somebody. We played hard on Saturday. And Sunday was what we call recovery day. Do I have witness? Anybody been there? God rescued you and I. The Bible says from where? From the domain of darkness. And tell your neighbor there's a transaction that has happened. That word transfer is just like when you call the bank or when you go on your bank accounts and you log in and you want to transfer one amount from the savings to the checkings to cover that bill. You were the commodity. You were the currency that God took. Come on, somebody. Out of darkness. And transferred you and I. Into what? Into his kingdom. Now, the church is God's kingdom. I want you to write that down. The church is the kingdom of God today on earth. And you and I are kingdom people. And what we need to learn to do as kingdom people is to have a kingdom mind. Now let me say this. There's a lot of misnomers today. There's a lot of contemporary thinking today. There's a lot of people who believe that you don't really need the church to have church. You don't really need organized religion is what they call it, okay? You don't need to be in a building. We can, we can, we can, we are spiritual, but we don't need the church. But there's a way that seemeth right to a man. But the end thereof is death. And may I say this to you and I tonight, to somebody tonight, 
the moment that you feel like you no longer need church instructions as a Christian, as a kingdom transfer. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. As a, as, as a KT. Amen. God transferred you. All of us have, you know what's so beautiful about church life? We all come from the same place. Darkness. We couldn't think straight. We could, we wasn't walking straight. Listen, we had it going on, but we were still dissatisfied. Anybody of you, any one of you had it all together? I'm not talking about, I'm talking about you had material things. You had, you had a, a little level of success. Come on, somebody. You enjoyed yourself for a little while. But guess what? It still did not satisfy that thing, that something inside of you that left you empty at the end of the day. Do I have anybody who's been there? You were searching and searching and searching. And, 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 and watch this. And watch this. And God saw you in your mess. And he did not leave you there. Oh, I thank him tonight. I thank him tonight that he did not leave me where I was. Because I was helpless and hopeless. And listen, and listen, and here's the thing though. I thought in my mind that I was okay. And all the while I was killing myself. And all the while, amen, I was putting myself in danger, but God rescued me from me. I blamed everybody else for what happened to me, but me. Isn't that how it works sometimes? Sometimes we blame everybody else for why we ended up the way we did. We, we blamed everybody. We blamed mama for not being there to protect us. We blamed daddy for not being there. But I found out something on Sunday. Come on, somebody. You are God's masterpiece. Amen. And he's been working on you from the moment you were born. The Bible says that in your mother's womb, he shaped you. So he says he transferred us into his kingdom, into the kingdom of his beloved what? Son. So in this kingdom, and I, I want to I declare this to somebody here today. <clears throat> In a kingdom, there's a king. <laughs> and our king is Christ. God loves the church so much that, and we're gonna get to that. We're gonna get, man. We're gonna get. We're gonna get to that scripture here. He loves the church so much. Uh, he loves the church so much that he died for the church. Now, we have to declare and ask ourselves a question and define, okay? What is church? Is it a building? Or is it a people? It's a people. When God took the children of Israel out of Egypt, he formed the church. They were his nation. That was the nation of Israel. His special people, but they were formed in what we call the ecclesia. They are his people. So the children of Israel... Uh, them going through the wilderness and the tabernacle and in the temple, it's a picture of where we are now. Okay, so they 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 had a leader, Moses. Right, they followed their leader. The leader then got his instructions from God, and then the leader led them 
to wherever God was leading them. But there were a few along the way who said, no, we're going to fire the pastor and we're going to start our own group because guess what? Life gets tough as a, as a church. And guess what we're going to do? We're going to go back to Egypt. Be careful of who you're following. Because if you're not following the man that God has put over your life, and you're listening to somebody else, you may be led astray. That's why he gives you shepherds after his own heart. Are you following me? I want you to understand that... Okay. Not too long ago, I got an invitation in the mail. An exclusive invitation to apply for. As a matter of fact, they approved me for. They call it the Black American Express. I wish I had somebody. Anybody, anybody ever heard about the Black American Express? Huh? Says at least you heard about it. the the Black American Express is unlike any any. Listen, I got platinum now. Y'all ain't trying to hit me. But I'm like, how did they make the black better than the platinum? Anyways, but that's their, their, their been. But here's the thing. They told me that because of my record, because of who I am, because of what my record states, and because I've been a good customer, right, and because I pay my bills on time, we want you to go to the next level in what? Membership. Can I ask you a question? How long have you been a Christian? Have you got the invitation yet? To step up in your level of membership. See, you're not doing God a favor. God is doing you a favor by elevating you in his kingdom. So that you can become everything and find satisfaction in life and living and still have a good time. I still go out and play. Amen. I still have a good time. I still enjoy my life. Listen, just because you're part of a church doesn't mean you have to be sour and stuck up. No. See, I, when you have joy... When the joy of the Lord is your strength, when you have, when you, when you know who you are in Christ, when you know your identity, which I will talk about that after this, but watch, when you know who you are in Christ and you know your part, listen, don't let nobody talk you out of it. You know who talks you out of it? We say the devil, but it's you. Your flesh starts saying, I ain't going dance. <laughs> you know, I just, ah, you know, I just. Listen, if I was a member, like if I was like a lay person and the pand pandemic came and the church doors were open, I'd beat you to the parking lot. Because, let me tell you something. When I got saved, let me tell you what happened to me when I got saved, y'all. I never forget being so scared. Because I, I was so lost. And I had lost my mind. And, and, and I was so, so scared. I was fragile. I went from a man that was strong and confident to a broken branch. I mean, just beaten down to the ground. And I would go to the parking lot to the church. I would sit in that parking lot. And I would wait for Bible study to get in. But when I walked through those doors, man, I felt, I felt like I was whole again. May I ask you a question? Can I ask you this question? Do you feel that way when you come here? Does any of you ever feel that? I mean, how do you feel when you come to church? How do you feel? That's the question. <laughs> Safe? What else? Secure? 
a sense of, of uh, confidence, calmness, a sense of peace, a sense of like, man, there's something here that keeps drawing me back, right? I used to run to Bible study. I used to run to worship because I felt that, man, this is what I needed. I had no clue what God was going to do with me. All I wanted to do was be close to him. That's all I wanted. That's, and listen, if that's what you want, the nearness of God, when we assemble together as a group of people, right? Watch this. I like online. I, I, I like that option. I, I really do. I mean, I think it's a great option for geographical reasons and things like that. But man, it, 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 I was, I was, I was about to lose my mind. I, seriously, it, it, it had come to a point where I'm like, man, I got, I got to get back to the house of God. I have to get back into the house of God. But, but look, how many of you started to dry up? Tell the truth, right? Seriously, didn't you start drying up a little bit? The connection was lost a little bit, and you were like. You got a little comfortable. But God transferred you into his kingdom. But, but, but watch this now. Watch this now. Watch this now. He says he transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. I miss this kind of Bible study, by the way. Okay, Go, go to Matthew 16 for me. I miss this kind of Bible study. This is the Bible study we've always had, right? Look what he says here. Watch this. I'm going to show you something tonight. I, I, I was going to go to somewhere, but, you know, just can't do it. You know, the scripture is just so powerful, man. Matthew chapter 16. Watch this. Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16, verse 17. Jesus said to him. What did you say to him? Actually, this, this, this is absurd. Okay, Jesus was having a little conversation with Peter. And, and, what, and, and here's the thing you have to be careful of, y'all. You have to be careful of who you hang around with. And you have to be careful who you envy on social media. Let me bring that element in now. I'm bringing, I'm, you know, I'm contemporary. I'm going to bring it all together, right? Be careful who you envy because what you see is an illusion. They're just showing you the parts of their lives that they want you to see. They're not showing you the struggles that they have. Okay? Watch this. Watch what he says. Now, when Jesus, 13, when Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he was asking his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? Now, it's a dangerous thing to get Jesus confused. <laughs> Look what he says. And they said, some say John the Baptist. The others say Elijah. Still others, Jeremiah. And others, the prophets. May I ask you a question tonight? Do you really know who Jesus is? Do you really know or are you confused about his identity? Are you not sure that he's the savior of the world? Are you sure that he is the savior of the world? Are you sure that he saved your soul and transferred you into this glorious kingdom? Because watch this. Watch this. When you don't, when you're not clear on who he is, then committing to his church becomes a problem. Verse 15 says, he said to them, uh, but you, who do you yourself say that I am? Now, let me tell you what's happening to the disciples. They were in relationship with Jesus, but out of fellowship with Jesus because they were hanging in the crowd. And what the reason Jesus asked that question is because, see, if I plant a seed, John the Baptist, Elijah, 
the prophet Jeremiah. Then what? Then what starts happening? What starts happening? What starts happening? We got what? Confusion. That's why it's important for all, all of us to read the same Bible. The NASB. Because if you're reading the King James and you're reading the NLT and the NIV and this other versions, right? And we all reading, sitting in church, we're going to be all confused. But, but here's the thing. I believe a lot of people lose sight of who Jesus really is. And then they're so confused of who he is, they don't understand who he is, so they just go back to living just any kind of way. And the church becomes second, third, fourth, fifth, an option. Membership matters. American Express said, now with the black card, this is what they told me. You can go to Rolls Royce. They got an exclusive invitation. See, they... See, this is what the black card gives you. See what I'm saying? I can go to Rolls Royce with that card. And, and, and that particular, what, what they do, they send out these invites. And Rolls Royce only sell their cars at air shows where they're selling airplanes. And you, you don't know. It's not open to the public. You get a special invite. And you can, and watch this. And then you got to pay $500 to get in. Come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. To buy a car that's worth what? Two hundred, three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars, even more than that. But you can put it. Uh, I believe as as believers, we don't have no black car. I believe we got a card that, that we can't even describe. I believe that card that it's past platinum, it's past gold, it's past I believe it's so amazing. But a lot of y'all have not opened up the invitation just yet. Because you're still living. Oh, come on, somebody. On the green card. <laughs> you know the green American spread. That's that's the bare basics right there. You're not tapping into the tapping into the power that you have. Right? The power, the access, the resources, the things that you can have, watch this, without even working for it. Oh, don't 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 miss that. What I mean is this God will just drop it in your lap because he can trust you with it. Because he knows you're gonna bring it right back to the kingdom. You've been looking for opportunity. God said, I already had your opportunity. You know how many times I blew my opportunities? Because I was out searching to try to make opportunities. Oh, y'all ain't trying to hear me, man. Listen, I'm going to tell you the truth. When I lost focus, focus, right? Watch this. When I lost focus and I was trying to help God, God sat back and he started laughing at me. <laughs> Look at him. He's trying to help himself. He's trying to help me. He doing all this in my name, quote, unquote, Okay. But nothing was working. I'm talking about as a believer. When all I had to do was invest in the kingdom and, and stay kingdom minded because he transferred me after all from the domain, dominion of darkness into the glorious kingdom. So therefore I have to be kingdom minded. And saints, I want you to change the way you think. Watch what he says. Watch what he says. But you can't be confused about who Jesus is. You got to know this. Look what he said in verse 15. He said, well, uh, but who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. He got it right, man. They, some, some writers say that's when Peter got saved right there. <laughs> Here's the thing. Uh, Jesus is everything, but first he has to be Christ over your life. He has to be the son of the living God. You have to believe that he's God. And if he don't believe that he's God, then you got the big problem. He's not a little G. He's not a small G. He's not an OG. He is God. I'm going to say it one more time. Jesus is God. Say it one more time. Make the devil mad. Jesus is God. 
And because he's God, he can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or even think. Because Jesus is God. If you're going to be part of a church, a Christian church, you've got to believe that. You can't believe anything else. And if you doubt that, then you've got problems. Now watch what he says next. He says, Simon Peter. Jesus said to him, blessed are you, Simon, Bojona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. You know what I believe about church members? I believe that the Spirit works individually with all of you. I believe that God gives you insight that not, not of this world. But if you're not filled with the Spirit and if, you're, if you've grieved Him, you know, if you get up every day thinking life is terrible and you don't realize who you are and what you're a part of, then you're going to miss what the Spirit of God is trying to teach you. See, flesh and blood says He is Elijah. <laughs> flesh and blood says He's John the Baptist. Flesh and blood says He, he all right. But watch this. Watch what he says. He says, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who's in heaven. Verse 18. And I say to you that you are what? Peter. And upon this rock. What rock? Not Peter. But upon this. Listen. This rock. I want to show you something. I want to show you something. I want you to pay attention to what I'm about to say next. I got four minutes. Watch this. Watch this now. Watch this now. He says, I, I, I will build my church. I. God does not need us to build anything. We have to submit to Him. And He will do the building. The church has been built on the rock. And you are part of this church that he has built and is growing. See, there's a difference. The church has already been built. It just has to what? Ah. You know, I asked a question. I I, I was thinking about it. I was thinking about this. I was thinking about this. I said, I said, I was looking up the, the new location. I said to myself, I said, man, there's been three churches in that building. Three. I started to say, what makes us different? Saints, if I could transport what I want for you. <laughs> And you receive it and start doing it. It would be an amazing thing. But I know it doesn't work like that. But I want you to know something. You're part of something bigger than you. Bigger than you can even imagine. But you have to change your thinking. Look what he says. I will build my church. And the gates of what? That's hell. Will not overpower it. You know what that you know what that suggests? My professor said this. He said that when you walk out the church doors tonight and you open the doors, you are stepping into the pits of hell. Because the pits of hell is at the doorstep of the church waiting for somebody to fall back. 
But when you're in the will of God, you can walk on fire. You can walk on hell's head. Because you're protected. So you got to ask yourself a question. When I walk out of here tonight, when I sign off from live stream, am I going to fall right into the pit? Or am I going to slide over the pit? And walk into my purpose. And do what God has called. Listen, no matter how much people wish bad on you, you are the church. Hell will not overpower you. You hear me? Hell will not overpower you. But you got to know that the element is there. That the gates of hell is wide open. Now let me tell you something about the gates of hell now. The gates of hell is not a, a, an ugly scene. The gates of hell look like Hollywood. The gates of hell look real, real seductive. As a matter of fact, the devil is going to open opportunities on, at the gates of hell for you to walk through it. And for you to leave the kingdom behind. Flesh and blood didn't reveal that to me. I've been in danger before. Of taking opportunities at the gates of hell. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have, I had no business hanging around at the gates of hell. <laughs> he says that the gates of hell would not overpower the church. So I want to say this to you tonight as I close. The church that you belong to is protected. It's what? It's protected. You have protection. The next verse says, and I will give you. Oh boy, if I spoke in tongues, I would. Oh, Shondo. Might as well just do it just to do it. <laughs> Not only do I have protection, but I got access. You know what keys represent in the Bible? Authority. Ownership. Come on, man. You're not leasing anymore. Ownership. You have no deed. You have no note. Ownership. He says, I will give you, but we have to live as if we have the keys. He says, and I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosened in heaven. Listen, you got the power. Because you got the keys. Because you were transferred into the kingdom from the domain of hell to the kingdom of light. And then God just handed you some keys. You think I'm sitting home on Tuesday night? If I got access, that access, it's like you going to the bank and then you ain't asking no questions. You just walk straight to the vault. And you know, these new vaults, they ain't got combination now. They got keys. And you got to use your eye print and your fingerprint to get in. And that's the keys that God has given you. So much power that you can bound Satan's agenda. Because you have keys to open up different things in different levels. <laughs> you know, you got, listen, there are different doors in the kingdom. There are different access levels. There are different things. And listen, and, and that one key, that one key, keys, will start unlocking 
your peace. Start unlocking your joy. Start unlocking your contentment. Start, listen, you start your financial gains. Come on, somebody. Your destiny, all this stuff. God has given you keys. And so, being a member of the church means that you always have those keys. Use it.